streaming. What's up everyone? Trying a different camera out today. This is my other screen display. Um, happy Friday. Those of you that joined, that uh, saw the new year, you know I, I did my New Year's Eve show this year, but for those of you that didn't see it, happy new year. It's great to be back here in 2023. Pretty amazing, right? Incredibly cool. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a song that I've had requested on here, and I think this is one of the finest, if not the greatest country song ever. It's one of my favorite songs, period. Um, but I've seen this in the comments section so many times that people ask, when are you going to do a breakdown of this particular song? Uh, let me uh, say that we have a sale today. This is kind of a, a new thing. If you buy any course in my store, like my music theory course, because we're going to do music theory and ear training kind of this as we're going to analyze the song. This is really a what makes this song great video here. Uh, we're going to do a, do a song analysis, uh, and you buy any course, let's say Ear Trainer or Beato, um, Beato Book Interactive, and you get one free. So you just go to the store, put two things in the cart, and you just pay for one of them. It'll deduct the other one. That's how it works. That's how Aaron explained it to me anyways. Uh, buy one, get one free. Anything that, you know, if you don't have, uh, if you're missing one of the courses or whatever, you want to get one. So this is how you can do it, or you can get the Quick Lessons course and the Ear Training course or the... Be out of book and quick lessons, whatever it may be. Um, okay, you guys know what the song that I'm going to do is because I I showed it to you in the uh, in the thumbnail, uh, and I purposely put it in there because people have been been asking about this song. This is Glenn Campbell. I'm gonna play you the song. This is a Jimmy Webb composition. Jimmy Webb is a legend, legendary songwriter, just an absolute genius, genius songwriter. And uh, this particular song is, um, he has a lot of really great songs. It, as a matter of fact, he wrote two of Glenn Campbell's biggest songs, this, Wichita Lineman, and uh, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Both just stunningly great songs. Let's check out the beginning of this. This is, this is Glenn Campbell and the Wrecking Crew, who he was part of, but that's who the band is that's playing on this. Listen. That's Carol Kay on the bass. I am a lineman for the county And I drive the main road Searching in the sun for a Beautiful. Oh, man. Wichita is still on Love this. Okay, C so had nine there, B flat. Then I know I need Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about this. this is really what the song is so cool. It starts out with a great Carol K bass line, bam, 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 and then it goes down. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. Now this kind of chord is the um, a thing that was very popular in the '70s. It's this is like a dominant nine sus chord, right? This is really like a B flat major over C. But you hear this in the '70s. This is very much. Um, out of that time period. These chords are not used that much, but this is what's interesting is that you would hear this in pop music, you hear it in country music, you heard it in jazz a lot. A lot of the jazz artists in the 70s would use these dominant uh, sus, dominant nine sus chords, right? You could play it like, like that. What's interesting about this, I am a lineman for the county. So it's, it goes, uh, it goes up to the ninth on in the first measure. And I drive the main road. 
I love this that um, it's really like and I drive but he's going and he does that flat nine against that now there's a lot of dissonances in this song for a country song right so so you have this uh duh, so I'm lining for the county goes up to the ninth and a drive that's beautiful drive the main road uh road searching in the sun for another and on the g chord there he's going he does that sus on the downbeat. So there's a, so many different, uh, what I call haunting tones. I asked Sting about this. Uh, this is the thing to me that creates interest in songwriting are these notes, these beautiful, beautiful notes that are dissonances against the chord, the flat nine against this A minor seven chord or, or really F major over A. The, um, the C over the G chord that resolves up to the fifth. I'm going to go to the to, to a chart of the song here. This is really, really cool. Uh, this is um, this is in lieu of my whiteboard. Check this out. So we have the Wichita Lyman chart here, and I have it on my iPad, and I can actually write on it. And I want to, to call your attention to a few of the things. So in the very beginning here, we have this A to C. Okay, that's from the uh, major seventh of the B flat major seven chord up to the ninth of it, okay? And that's a very color, colorful sound because it's an upper extension, the the, uh, the seventh to the ninth, the ninth being the the, uh, the ninth of the chord. So the ninths, elevenths, and thirteens, or seconds, fourths, and sixths are what, call, what we call upper extensions. Um, then it goes down to A minor seven, but you see this note F here, that no F, da, 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 da. Let me raise that through a little too big here. Um, I think this works great. There's a dissonance right there. Right, so it's A minor seven. It's really F major over A. And I love that he goes. And this note right here, this B flat on a strong beat, that's a dissonance on a strong beat. And, and dissonance is on strong beats create tension that needs to be resolved, okay? Da, 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 da. Okay, so this note though, if you think about the bass note, A, and you have that note B flat against it, that's really dissonant, that's a flat nine. And then it goes back to C uh, nine. I love that from the third, the minor third, D minor seven, up jumping way up to the to the uh, flat seven, to the minor third, and then on this on the G chord, right, uh, uh, to the G major. So we have this dissonance on the downbeat here. These are the things that make the melody so strong. And then you have it goes right to. Uh, da, 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 da. D sus four in the in the uh, piano part or in the guitar part that that Glenn's playing in the strings. This is a D sus to D major. What's interesting about this uh, too? So we we start in in um, we start in the key of F major, right? So you got the one chord here. F major seven, one chord to the five chord in the key of F. I love this, writing with this thing, this is great. B flat major seven is the four chord. This is an old school Beato whiteboard lesson here, but done with an iPad, a little bit more high tech this year, right? Um, then we go to the three chord, three minor, A minor seven. Uh, then the C sus back to the five chord. Then uh, D minor seven is a six chord. Six, three, we're still, it's all diatonic. Uh, the G chord though, what do you do with that G chord? Well, that's a secondary dominant chord. The G is a five of five. It's a five of the five chord, which is C7. So that's a five of five, secondary dominant chord. But then it goes to D sus to D major. And then you're like, okay, well, are we in a new key here? Uh, well, we are in a new key really. Uh, you could say that we're in the key of G here. Right. If you start looking here, 
If it were the key of G, then D sus would be the five chord, right? Then this would be a G, the key of G here, right? Uh, five chord, five chord, then C add nine is the four chord in the key of G, right? Uh, then you have G over B, that's the one chord again, but in first inversion right here. Then it goes to G minor over B flat. It's, um, that, yes, it's it's like a G minor, but the, the cool thing about this, the melody is this dissonance with the, the uh, F sharp against it. Let's talk about this here. I love how it goes to that, the four chord. And I drive the main road, searching in the sun for another overload. I hear you sing in the wire. I can hear you through the wine. Oh, man. Okay, so there. Very, very hip. So you have this, it's like, it's like a G minor major seven there, because this F sharp is dissonant against this B flat, right? This, this is such a sophisticated melody. When I was a kid, I just knew it sounded great. I never knew why it sounded great. As a matter of fact, I've never analyzed it till right now. This is the first time that I'm analyzing it. I, I'm just learning it uh, and playing it. I mean, I, I can, if I'm intellectualizing it, I could hear, if I was thinking about it, no problem. I can hear what these chord changes are because I'm listening to the bass motion. I'm listening to the melody against the bass. And this is really a thing that I've talked a lot about. Uh, let me take this down for one second. So I've talked about this, um, about to become a great songwriter and to know that your songs are good, the first thing you should do is to try and learn your songs or any song with just the bass note and the melody, okay? Because that's really what you want to see. And what you'll notice in this is that you don't see a lot of roots in the melody. Right? Um, Lyman for the county. Uh, uh, Lyman for the county. So you've got this. So you get the seventh against the B flat and then the ninth. Then it goes to the root there. But it's a root on a sus chord. And then. And then you got. Beautiful, that's sus four, right? You want to... Uh, super strong writing, just brilliant uh, chord movement, note um, uses of dissonances, dissonances on strong beats, when I talked to Sting uh, in my, the first question I asked Sting in my interview was about what I called haunting tones. This is a descriptive word that one of my old friends used to use uh, for these upper extensions or dissonances, haunting tones. And, and I called them surprise notes. And Sting said, I like the way you use the word surprise. And he said that if, if a song doesn't surprise you in, in within eight bars, it doesn't surprise him, he stopped listening. And later on in the interview, he talks about he and Dominic Miller, who um, they study Bach every day. And he says, there are surprises in Bach's music every, you know, every bar, every beat, <laughs> there are surprises, it's amazing. And these are the things, this is why Sting is such a great songwriter. And all these great songwriters, Billy Corgan, Joni Mitchell, Kurt Cobain, Sting, Jimmy Webb, they're the, they all use the same 
principles, okay, that, that they find these notes. They don't have a lot of roots in the melodies. They have beautiful root motion and, and, and melody lines that sit over them. And then there's this harmonic movement. You know, I, I, I talked about this, uh, about, I've been talking about this lately. It didn't really come up in my AI video that I did the other day, but it's it's kind of the lack of harmonic motion in popular music. And popular music of the 70s, 60s, mid 60s to the 70s was, um, was uh, very rich in harmony. Uh, I also did this video about the um, lack of modulations uh, in songs. From, from 1965 to 2009, there were 25% of songs had modulations. The modulation is a key change. Uh, like this song has this key change. So it's going really from F to uh, F to G, okay? Um, and then it has some other surprise sounds in it because then it goes to that G minor chord or the G minor over B flat chord here, right here. Uh, so this is what brings in the richness. And then you go D over A. Um, uh, so it's like a... I can hear you through the one. I love that. I love that. Then he goes to the sus4 on the D chord there, right? He's got really two dissonances in a row. Um, uh, with that G over the D, it says D over A, but it's really D in, in second inversion with an A in the bass. And then it's still on. That's what, then it goes, uh, alignment. Then, uh, when I heard that as a kid, that C add nine, I didn't know what it was. The song came out in 1968. I was six years old. It was on the radio all the time. I just knew it sounded amazing. Um, oh, I'm writing on here, and Billy's going to tell me that I'm writing on this thing. Here we go. Now you can see it. Is that what you're going to tell me, Billy? Billy's looking at me like, you're writing on the thing and, the, and it's not even up on the screen yet. Um, so I just circled this C add nine right here. To me, that's just absolutely beautiful. I love how it's on the B flat. But this was common back then. This was a common, these were common. Well, not that common, but these were used a lot. If you think of of um, of bands like Chicago, uh, people like Stevie Wonder, uh, artists like Earth, Wind, and Fire, um, this was just these were common sounds that you would hear in the seventies. This is just masterful songwriting, though. There's so much about this song that makes it great. Now, how do you hear this stuff, and how do you analyze it? Well, to analyze it, uh, one of the things that you need to do is you need to know what chords are in each key. This is what my Beato book teaches. When I say my Beato book interactive is a theory book, it's a, it's a theory book that you can use to analyze songs to um, to understand how to improvise because it basically teaches you what song what chords are in what keys what scales go with those chords um, I'll give you an example here uh, and and I'll just repeat this again everything is a buy one get one free in my store if you own my Beato book interactive and you want to get the ear training course put them both in the uh, in the in the uh, the cart and you'll get one of them for free. You'll get the ear training course for free um, or, or whatever, however it works. You, you can figure it, you know, buy one, get one free. You know how that works. Okay, so let's say we're in the key of F major, right? So F major, I love this writing on the, this thing here, right? So F major, I just put F major seven, key of F major, there we go. Uh, so what are the chords in F major? The one chord is F major. The two chord, we have a, we have a pattern of chords that happens in every major key. 
One is major, two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major. You know, think about a one, four, five progression. Uh, six is minor and seven is diminished. I used to do this all the time. I used to make these whiteboard videos like this constantly back in the day. And I haven't done one in well, probably a year and a half or so. So F major, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, uh, a, um, D minor, whoops, D minor, and E diminished. Okay. Well, in this song, there are, um, all right, F major. In this particular song, there's a lot of seventh chords, right? So uh, sevenths work the same way. Um, so let me let me just make this little thing for you. So one, four, and five are major, equal major. A little, little uh, cheat sheet for you here. Two, three, and six. You like this, right? This is, this is I love I love technology like this. Is minor. Aaron hooked this up for me. Um, and then seven, the seven chord, the, se the chord built on the seven scale degree is diminished, okay, diminished. Um, if you make these all uh, seventh chords though, the one chord, uh, let me fix this here. I'm, I'm still not used to writing on the iPad yet. The one chord is a major seven. I learned this in my very first guitar lesson when I, at, at, by, from Tom Rizzo. My first guitar teacher. I only took two lessons from Tom, but he told he taught me uh, triads and seventh chords in major keys in my first guitar lesson ever. Two is a minor seven. Three chord is a minor seven. Four chord is a major seven. I'll get used to writing on here. Five chord is a dominant seven. Six chord is a minor seven. And the seventh chord is a uh, half diminished or minor seven flat five. I'll just make it half diminished. It's a circle with a with a line through it. So if I write out the names that go with each F major seven, G minor seven, minus is minor, A minor seven, B flat major seven, uh, C seven, D minor seven, and E minor seven flat five. E minor seven flat five. Minor seven flat five is another name for half diminished. They're interchangeable. I use both names. Uh, you'll notice some of the chords. If I go back to here, okay, uh, there's chords like C nine sus four that you see right here. Whoops. Well, C nine sus four really falls under this category here. C nine sus four. It's a dom. It's a C seven chord with extra extensions on there. You have the sus four, and you have the nine. Okay, so that would be like one. Let me take this off here for a second. I'll show you on the guitar. One, three, five, flat seven, nine, eleven, or four. Right. That's that chord sound right there. Beautiful chord. I love that arpeggio. Love that. Love that. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Dominant nine sus four. Okay. Um, so this song uh, is a great song for learning about harmony because it doesn't modulate 22 times like Never Gonna Let You Go that I did, did my video, the most complex pop song of all time that had 22 modulations in it. And I, honestly, I wish that I had this, that I'd use this for it. I, oh, actually, you know what? I put it on the screen anyways, and I, and I hand wrote all the, uh, all the chords on that song. But to me, this is a really great way to learn it using the iPad like this. Uh, take out a lead sheet and go through. This is this is uh, something that I used to do. This is a real book chart here. So I would take charts like this. What's up, super Billy? Chats. Okay, I'll, I'll get to this one second. I'll get to the super chats. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats. Um, I would take real book tunes like this and go through. I'd have my students do this and then do harmonic analysis of them. When I say harmonic analysis, I mean write down what key you're in, when you change keys and what are all those chords in each key. And then I would have them write the notes over each, uh, write the, the um, 
uh, analysis for what happened in the uh, in the melody, right? So if I go here to the verse, I'll erase some of this stuff here. I would say um, it goes something like this. Um, so this would be one. Uh, well, I'll, hold on. I'll do it. I'll do it from here. Let me get all those things out of here. This, like when I started the song here, it's hard to write in here. This is the seven. This is the nine. Sorry, I can't write very well. This is the flat. If this is A minor seven, F is the flat six, going to the flat seven, going to the uh, flat nine, going to the root, going to the flat six, going to the flat third. Okay, and this is on. This is the root there. Right. This is how you do a. Heart, this is how you do a melodic analysis. What note of the chord is it? What scale tone? What's wrong, Billy? iPad. Oh my God! I can't even believe this. Okay, I just did all this here. Um, I'm going to do it one more time so you get this here, and then I'm going to talk. Then I'm going to do the super chats here. So what I did here is that you didn't see. I would make my students do this. Okay, this is the seventh of the chord, the ninth of the chord, the flat six, flat seven, the flat nine. That's this note there. That's a whoop, flat nine. Boy, I can't really write on this thing. Flat six, it's so small. And then flat third. These are the, like the flat third is here. That note C, this is the flat six. This is the root. Flat six, flat seven, right? You analyze every single note. This is the root here. This is the flat third going to the uh, flat seven, flat seven, right? This is the flat third there. What this does is this helps you to understand how melodies are written. So you understand the, the key relationships of these things, and you do this by ear as well. The theory of it, how it works, and being able to hear what the third of a of a minor seventh chord sounds like if you hear the chord, right? Or if you hear, knowing that's the ninth, right? That note is the ninth there. This note C is the ninth of a B flat major seventh chord. So I can sing it. I don't have to play it on the guitar. I can just sing the note and I know what it sounds like before I hear it because I know what these interval relationships are. Does that make sense? Okay, let me go back to the Super Chats. Did I miss these, Billy, or what? Dorothy, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thomas, uh, can you do Say a Little Prayer? That's a great song. Billy, what were my other Super Chats that I missed? There should be a um, way for you to see them there. I don't know why I can't see them. Uh, Mason, thank you so much. I'll use this sale for the beginner guitar course in your Beato book, or are there restrictions? No, 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 no. Uh, yes, you can use that cell. Uh, do say it a little part. Did I miss something here, Billy? There was John two thousand uh, twenty-five dollars. Great song. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Anything else I missed, Billy? I can't see any. Can't see any. Okay. Thank you for the super chats, uh, Griselda. What's up? Carol K plays bass. Would be a fantastic interview. I've reached out to Carol K. I'm hoping to hear back from her. I'd really love to to interview Carol. She's a genius and and the the playing on this track is absolutely phenomenal um um there is a video of of glenn campbell from 2000 playing this on uh craig kilborn i think if that sounds right and he just played acoustic guitar, and he played the he played solo. He played a guitar solo with no accompaniment and no chords. He just played single notes, and it was great. I just love that that he didn't freak out that there was no harmony behind him or anything. He didn't even try to fill it in. He just played. He left space. Glenn Campbell was a genius guitar player, absolute brilliant guitar player. And in this video, he talks about how to use a capo. And how he used the capo on a lot of famous songs that he played on. And um, somebody said in here, Glenn could shred with the best of them. He absolutely could. Glenn Campbell was a brilliant guitar player. But um, 
uh, but he was an amazingly good parts player, and he knew all this stuff. This is the thing, is all these people in the Wrecking Crew were all jazz musicians, and they really no, knew this stuff. That's why Carol Kay, she was a jazz bass player. The, they had all jazz players were session people then, and they knew how to how to just play all these cool parts like that. Uh, Richard asked me if my book is for piano too. Yes, my, my piano book, Interactive, so it's a, it's a 500 page PDF with video lectures, uh, with video um, video examples, with audio examples of everything in the book. It's 500 pages. This thing is so vast. I had students that didn't get through it in four years of college. I had students that, that told me they couldn't get through it in 30 years that came back to it. And I'm not just saying that. I made it to where it's like, okay, I just put everything in it. And then... When we re-released it, I spent two years on this, and uh, Aaron and I did this, um, and I rewrote all the examples in it because um, I'm just one of these people that wants to keep making things better. And um, that's that was really kind of the reason behind that. So that's my Beato book, Interactive. When I say interactive, it's video content, audio content, and PDF, and um, you know, and it has, it's it's a book, so it's an interactive book. Uh, but it'll go over all these things. How do you analyze what key you're in? How do you know what scale goes with each thing? Because that's the other thing too, is, is you have a chord chart like this. If I have a B flat major seven chord and it's the first chord of the verse, but but the chord, the song has started with F major seven and C, C nine sus, I know I'm in the key of F major. So I know that B flat, uh, chord there is the four chord, okay? So if I've heard this, that's a, a Lydian scale or the Lydian mode because it has a sharp four. One, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, one. But that. Love that, love that. So knowing what scales, if you're improvising, when Glenn was improvising on this, he knew all the scales to play because he had an amazing year. And all those guys, they all knew the theory of this stuff. They just learned it. And this is why you want to learn theory and you want, want you, and why you want to learn ear training because they could just play by ear over this stuff. Now playing by ear over it doesn't mean that you're just groping around and you don't know what key you're in. They know when it's a four chord, they hear that, that it's a Lydian. They know what notes to play because they can hear the chords that have come before and they know what notes to alter when they're improvising. They know what scales to stay in, okay? This is really, um, ear training and music theory are both part of the same thing. They're both part of the same concept, which is why I, uh, combine the two things. My ear training course has 80 different um, videos in it, and it has hundreds of modules that you that you use. It's a computer program and a video course together. And what it does is it teaches you about interval relationships first, okay? And once you get those interval relationships, you'll know... Although Carol stays on, on that, I think she plays the F in the bass on that. Uh, uh, you'll know what the what those chords are because you'll recognize the interval relationships uh, that, that happen. You follow the bass lines, and then you start to learn, okay, what are the notes in the melody? This is how you learn to play melodies by ear. I interviewed Keith Jarrett. Uh, I have not put the video out yet, who's one of the greatest mus living musicians of the of the 20th and 21st century. He will go down as one of the most famous people of our lifetime. Like Bach, like Beethoven, that's Keith Jarrett. And in the interview, Keith plays a song that I know he's never played because he figures it out by ear perfectly. And it's so compl complicated, but... Well, Keith has perfect pitch too, but that doesn't mean that Keith knows the uh, the the 
chord progression. He's figuring out the chord progression by ear on the spot because he understands all the relationships. And that's what you want to do. That's why you want to do ear training. That's why buying these courses is important, which is why I created these courses. I honestly created these courses with the hope that people would learn more about music like I did as a kid and, and all my friends and people that I went to college with. And, and they would use this to learn how to write better songs. They would learn about harmony, about melody, about, about bass motion, about developing motifs and, and the rhythms. How do you, how do you come up with, with great rhythms? Because rhythm is as important as anything uh, for melodies. A melody without rhythm is just nothing. It's just, they're just notes. The rhythm gives it, defines it, gives it the sentence structure. The rhythm is the, gives you all the punctuations of everything, right? Otherwise, it's just run on sentences. The rhythm can be when notes are being played and the rhythm they're being played and when notes are not being played, when notes are held and when they're cut off, right? It's not just how, how long a note goes for, it's where does the note actually cut off? And that's just as important. As, it's as important as where it starts, where it ends, right? Both those things are important. So anyhow, so this is what you learn by learning music theory, learning ear training. I have a beginner guitar course. If you want to learn, if you have never played before, that's all in there. Uh, but Wichita Lineman is an absolutely brilliant song. And, and Glenn, when it gets to this second, uh, when it gets to the solo. Oh, the, the, the string arrangement. I can, I can do a whole hour on the string arrangement. What's Glenn do? He plays the melody. Why? Because it's a phenomenal melody. Phenomenal melody. Okay. The rhythm of this is amazing. I love that. Do, 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 do. Oh, come on. This is this is genius. Jimmy Webb is still living, and I would love to interview him. If anyone knows Jimmy Webb or how to get in touch with him, this is how some of these interviews have happened, honestly. Um, he's written some of my all-time favorite songs, and he's still alive, and he's still out there doing it. He's Not only is he alive, he's out playing gigs. Because I've talked, who was I talking to yesterday? My buddy Pat, I think it was. It said that Jimmy Webb was playing up in uh, in the Cape or something. Um, he's one of the all time best songwriters. Everybody's talking about that, uh, along with Gordon Lightfoot. I see the recommend wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald in there. Uh, so so there you go. Um, this is uh, hey David, what's up, man? David Pastorius, good to see you. Um, this is a song that has been mentioned many times in the comments section on my live streams over the last six years, six and a half years. I'm glad that we talked about it today. Remember, buy one, get one free in the store. Got to put two things in the cart and then one will come up uh, when you when you go to check out. You'll see that uh, one has been discounted out of there. So uh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Welcome to the new year. We're going to have a great year this year. So we'll see you guys. Take care.